Okay, there we go. I'll just be a silent participant in the corner there. Right, so th thank you for your patience while we sorted out the recording here. Let's start looking at the slides and hearing from people. So there were a couple of people who were going to give their talks just now, and that was uh, Cam, you were going to talk about what we need to know about inherited and paediatric congenital conditions. <coughs> okay, do you want me to just start now on that? Yeah, just start now and share your screen. Yeah. Can you all see that? Yeah. So I was tasked with inherited and paediatric congenital conditions. Um, so I kind of stuck to your framework around just looking at topics and tasks and trying to answer a question, but then I added a little bit on at the end because I found it super useful, some of those last presentations that actually gave us some um, uh, content to take home. Mm -hmm. So topics, um, that first one there, congenital malformation, I'll open up on that, but otherwise it's just kind of, a lot of the topics are around specific disease processes. Um, and as you can see there, there's a whole range of them um, and that was picked out of all the previous questions. Um, and tasks, basically it just always came down to the same thing, like clinical, genetic and pathological um, processes involved. So it's just understanding that these different topics have clinical presentations, a genetic process, and how does that present um, pathologically. The, an example question, which is kind of the, the first topic before, um, I couldn't really see the question, but I saw it said it was around, it must have been just around as a general topic, developmental and congenital disorders. Um, so I tried to write an answer as though the question was just describe uh, what congenital disorders means. So I wrote that and these were the, I'd, I'd kind of studied this question before because I saw it as a pretty good foundation type question to then understand w what it means by congenital disorders. Um, so I didn't have too much trouble answering the question because I'd, I'd read it before. Um, is that going to go on to my next? Cool. So, yeah, the tips and things that, um, based on the model answer, is that a congenital condition is present at birth um, and that it can either be from chromosomal or mutant genes leading to a pathological uh, embryogenesis type problem, or it can be environmental factors such as infections, toxins, drugs, and radiation. I'm sure there could be a few more on that list, but those are the two main things. So you think about it either as, is this a genetic process or is this an environmental insult? Um, and yeah, stating that it's present at birth. And I kind of expanded on that, the fact that it normally interrupts some kind of normal functioning. It's never a gain of function. It's normally a loss of function and it may actually continue to get worse. I couldn't think of many that uh, got better. Um, and then I also said that it may end up, if it was germline, it could continue in a heritable fashion, but not all of them do. Um, I thought, and kind of like, I really uh, liked when some of the other presentations gave us some actual content to take home. Uh, these were my take home little points. So PAC6 is a great, um, genetic mutation to know because if you're talking about congenital developmental disorders because it's involved in Peter's anomaly and aniridia and it can have foveal hyperplasia. So PAC6 is on chromosome 11 and it's a master control gene for development of the eyes. So this is your go-to if you're going to think congenital. Aniridia is a great one because aniridia can either have just uh, aniridia, or it can come with a Wilms tumour and uh, mental retardation and things. And that's just because the PAC6 gene is right next door to the Wilms tumour gene. So that for me is this great little 
uh, tie-up study or tie-up kind of thing where on chromosome 11 there's the PAC6 gene and right next to it is the Wilms tumor gene. So not all aniridia comes with Wilms tumors, only 20% of them do, and those Wilms tumor also have a, a syndrome with it. Peter's anomaly um, also is a PAC6 type mutation, and so that for me is also ties in this whole you know, embryogenesis um, function of PAC6. When, when, and then the second one, so like I said at the start, it can be gene mutation, it can also be chromosomal abnormality, and the easy one there is trisomy 21, obviously a non-disjunction, um, so it's spelled wrong, during meiosis, and, and basically Down syndrome people have a raft of problems, but um, a lot of them have strabismus, keratoconus, and cataract, so that's just a nice, uh, easy one there. And then, like I said, there were uh, environmental factors, so toxins, drugs, infections, radiation, and an easy toxin one is alcohol, because we all know about um, fetal alcohol syndrome, and, and a lot of them have telecanthus, strabismus, and then interestingly, they, they, can, they have an association with Peter's anomaly, so Peter's anomaly can just stay there in your congenital learning. And then, as far as infection, rubella is a great infection to know, because it leads to congenital um, disorders, and so you can have congenital rubella syndrome, and it has a lot of systemic effects, mainly deafness and also cardiac defects. But within the eye, you just go from the back, you've got chorioretinitis, cataracts, and corneal clouding, and then um, at least to a small eye, and a lot of them get glaucoma. So rubella is an easy infection to know as far as um, congenital defects. And yeah, I think that was all. So that's my presentation. I have any questions or? That was really concise and great. Great tips at the end. Thank you, Cam. Cool. Okay, who's next? I am, so I'm talking about sizes. Um, I will share screen. Cool. So I've looked at uh, questions relating to physical eye, tissue de degeneration, and metaplasia. Um, there weren't too many past questions that I could find. Um, these were the two questions that have come up in the past on physical eye. So describing the changes seen within the physical eye, including calcification, bone formation, gliosis. Um, and also explaining why um, histological examination and um, finding out the original etiology can be difficult when examining a physical eye and the common macroscopic and microscopic findings. In terms of tissue degeneration, the most common question asked is to describe tissue degeneration and give four, uh, four types and give ocular examples. Um, they, the most common um, or the best answers I found describe these four types. Um, for metaplasia, it's mainly definition based and giving a few examples um, relating to ocular tissue. And in relation to these two topics, there are also um, lots of questions just explaining the pathological processes of and defining and giving examples of different terms. So I think that's the trickiest part is just knowing different definitions and examples of all these terms that sound a bit similar. Um, in terms of questions, I thought the exam questions were reasonably clear, but I did see a examiner feedback that I did not really understand. So in the 2006 paper, the question on tissue degeneration, which was this question, um, was considered to be very poorly answered. Um, and the common mistakes were basically people using different terms that did not come under the umbrella of tissue degeneration. And I was a bit confused because I wasn't sure if they, they meant that all of these answers were wrong. So is fibrosis, atrophy, cataract, amyloid, or not an example of tissue degeneration? So that might be something we can discuss. But as far as I could tell, hyalinization, fatty degeneration, calcification, and elastotic degeneration definitely are correct examples. But I wonder if the team knows any other examples, if they happen to ask for more than four. I couldn't really find any good resources in um, Eagle, Sehu, or AAO to really concisely give a list of types of tissue degeneration. Um, 
and the past question I tried to answer was this one, which I thought was quite a good question that included a lot of different um, aspects of Sizical Eye. And Sehu was the best source I could find because they basically answered in, in that chapter and Sehu basically answered this question, which is that um, physical eye is difficult to examine because all the structures are unrecognizable by definition and there's always a long interval between the initial insult and the um, eventual nucleation. So it's hard to tell the initial cause. And macroscopically, you get a grossly disorganized shrunken globe, which is the definition of size of um, bulbi. The eye uh, macroscopically is often cuboidal due to the action of the erectile muscles rather than round. Microscopically, the main three things to mention are um, metaplasia um, of the ciliary epithelium forming a cyclotic membrane behind the pupil, degeneration of fibrous metaplasia of the lens, uh, retinal gliosis, and RPE fibrous metaplasia, and possibly osseous metaplasia as well, um, and as a result of the retinal changes, optic nerve atrophy as well. So I thought this um, question was quite good and quite easy to remember how to answer. Um, tips for answering the questions, I think is knowing the different definitions of all these different terms, um, as they all kind of sound similar, but they're all different. Um, and, and knowing the types of tissue de degeneration, not getting that confused with like metaplasia, dysplasia, which are not normal tissue um, degeneration. Um, and just remembering those key features of thysis. Good. The only other type of degeneration I can think of is myxoid degeneration. Can you think of other degenerations, Amanda? Hmm. Amyloidosis I, is listed as one in... Yeah, I wondered about that, uh, but I wasn't sure because according to this examiner feedback, apparently that's not one or... Well, I would uh, call it amyloid degeneration, but how about you, Amanda? I think it's quite well, a specific process. It's a patho pathological process, isn't it? Yeah. Abnormal protein deposition. Mm. So, Lucy, just a quick question. If you go back to the question, this one, the 2016 question, yeah. does that does it have two parts? He wanted us to describe the tissue degeneration and then give ocular examples. Yeah. He talked about that. He talked about the ocular examples, right? Yeah, so for example, they, they obviously didn't give these four answers. I just put them there for you to know what they meant. Um, but like yeah. hyalinization, like of the ciliary body and diabetes, diabetics, fatty degeneration, like um, I guess Arcus accounts as one, calcification um, of the RPE and yeah. the and elastic degeneration, like pterygium or skin changes. Yeah. yeah. But when he said other example given, I think he was referring to the upper example rather than the tissue part, the thyroid. Generation, oh yeah, maybe. So I, I guess they're suggesting that those are not the correct examples. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. How do I stop? Right, so, so other examples given are so so it's got incorrect examples given. So those yeah, I think that, those are correct examples. I think. So, so you reckon the other examples are correct examples? Yeah, because cataract is a um, definitely a, a degenerative process mm -hmm. where you get the breakdown of the you know the proteins in, in the lens oh that's good so that i guess um what they mean because on the pet on the like, this is the exact wording it wasn't clear if they mean the other examples are correct examples yeah so maybe the that correct examples yeah ones and these are the incorrect ones yeah. yeah okay cool so i'm trying to figure out okay i'll stop share now okay great all right people in Australia. Is there anyone from Adelaide here? They're still asleep. Uh, oh, Mark, you're from Adelaide. Well done. Yep. How are things going with the baby? Yeah, good. Uh, the big, big news here is the local team got knocked out in the preliminary final last night against Richmond. So mass, mass mourning, not in the grand final. <laughs> Shall we move on now to looking at the, um, the virtual slides? Uh, Amanda, I'm just going to um, stop the recording and then restart it so that we can put it in a different section. Okay, yep. So I will stop the recording. <laughs>